Neil, first of all, I suppose we should congratulate you on, on getting the York City job. You're clearly delighted to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I met, uh, I had a Zoom call with Matt initially I, after a phone call from David Stockdale. I had a Zoom call with Matt and then in person when I met Matt and Julianne and uh, David and sat down, presented to them, talked it through their plans, you know, what I can bring, etc. So, obviously, there, I'm pretty sure there would have been quite a few people interested in a job, so so for me to be given the, the role, I'm, I'm very proud and honoured. So what did they say to you when they gave you the job? What was it that they liked that you, you presented to them, and what did you present to them? Um, I think they needed, or they felt like they needed experience. So obviously I'm 500 and something games as a manager, so I've got that experience. I've always been a manager. I can be a head coach, but I've always been a manager. And I think that's what the club needs at this precise moment. So um, I think that experience, uh, that knowledge, obviously we talked through my record in the National League over the last four years is, is two playoff finals, a playoffs, uh, and, then, and then last season was solo. So that was quite strong, so I think that may have stood out. And then I just, you know, in my presentation, I, I just talked about me, what they'll get from me, and I'm a very honest guy. I work with integrity, with honesty, uh, authenticity, and, um, you know, they're going to get a feel for, do we want to work with this guy? And, Gladly, it ended up being with a yes. What's that like when you do a presentation? When you're trying to get a job, is it just like doing a presentation for, for any other job? Yeah. Or is it different because it's football? Yeah, I, I'm alright when I talk about football. If you get me in a room and ask me to stand in front of people and talk about something, I'm I'm not as educated on. I might struggle, but when it's football, over ten years, you know, I was I was Cardiff City's academy manager for six years, and then I've been over ten years as a manager. So you learn, you develop, you, you know. Neil Ardley now to Neil Ardley who first took over AFC Wimbledon they're, they're two different animals you know and you're always learning so as you go along you start to develop how you work where your leadership qualities come from how you shape a football team um, and that's what goes in the presentation and then it becomes natural and I think if it becomes natural and you're selling what you actually do I think it comes across a bit better. You say you're more of a manager than a head coach at the minute what are you going to bring to York City then? What do you need to see from these York City players that maybe has been missing in the last few weeks? Um, there needs to be lots. So, you know, this is there's no quick fix here at all. You know, you've you've got a group of players that were here last season, a lot of players that bought in the summer, you've got a hugely inflated squad because of that. You've got really keen owners who want to do things right. Um, and it, this isn't a club that's going to be just throwing money at it, contrary to what people believe. They want to run it properly, and that, that appealed to me. Um, what can I bring? I think I need to bring structure. I think I need to bring standards to the change room, uh, help create a better training ground, better facilities, better standards. I've always worked at high standards, you know, high, good quality training grounds expectations, uh, sports science, I'm very holistic in my approach, I know about GPS sports science, what targets should be being here, I'm, I'm very aware of that side of things as well as that side. So stuff that has slipped through the net maybe, might be missing, um, and <clears throat> I'm a good person, and I'm not, it's not me gloating, I'm a good person, I try and get the best out of people, leadership, something that I really focus on, I want people to run through a brick wall for me, and that's not just the players, that's my staff, so they'll get treated in accordance with that. So all of them things, that structure, so that everyone knows where they are, hopefully as we go along, I can't make them fit in two days, or get them fitter in two days, but hopefully as we go along, the training methods, the intensity they'll work at, will gradually increase them things. So it's a little bit of everything with higher standards, and the most important thing is, is a bit of clarity on the pitch. You know, if players go across on the pitch, and they're changing shape week in, week out, week in, week out without working on them shapes. It doesn't, you know, it's going to be hard for them. Uh, I don't just play one shape, I play two or three, but we would have worked on all of them. It would have been obviously nicer to have a full pre season to do that, but as the season goes on, the players will be really aware of how we're trying to play, what the patterns are, loads of repetitive work. They should be going across that pitch and they should be able to give all the key messages that I would be giving, they would be able to give to each other on the pitch. With it, the first game coming just tomorrow and you coming in, I was going to say midway through the season, but towards the start of the season, you will only though be able to put so many of those practices 
in bit by bit, won't you? So what you start, and what's, what's been the point number one this week? You felt we've got to do this ahead of whoever the opposition is going to yeah. be this weekend. Yeah, you, you have to look at, I've had two days, um, and within them two days, it's been 32 degrees both days. You know, you, if I overdid these two days, you'd have a group of players with no legs on, on Saturday. Um, so I had to get the balance right, the messages across. So we had a meeting yesterday, and I said, look, I'm going to focus on how we're going to try and play with the ball. I said, because the limited time I've got, I don't want to just set us up at home to worry about the opposition. I'm going to focus on how we're playing, try and give you clarity on what I expect. It's not obviously going to be free-flowing after two days, but they'll get the messages. That is only going to work if your mentality without the ball is top draw. And I mean from front to back, everyone's responsible for trying to keep a clean sheet. And if you buy into that, you'll enjoy the way we play. But it has to start, if I'm going to do that, you have to say, we'll, we'll, we will give you everything on the other side so that I don't have to over-focus. Then obviously today when you're doing match prep, you give them instances on whatever shape the opposition are playing on, where they press, where they don't press, so that there's a bit of clarity. Um, so you've, it's touching on everything. And then obviously we're playing ball and we're long throws, but balls in our box, big, strong, powerful. Then we have to touch on, and then we spent 40 minutes today on set pieces, long throws, making sure everyone knows their job. Now obviously on the day, I can't go and win the header for them. They've got to do that and stand up to it. But there's no grey areas. I've come in today to this meeting going, our boys know exactly what they're trying to do tomorrow. They're clear. We've worked on it for two days. And hopefully, we might get to see some of it. You come across as someone who's really thorough in everything you do. So clearly, you'll have done quite a bit of research, I'm guessing, about this team and how <coughs> they've played in the opening seven games, I think it is. What did you learn before you came to York City, before you met the players yesterday? I, Apart from obviously looking at results, you can tell so much from results. Of course, of course. I think it's a classic group of players that have been thrown in together, haven't learned each other yet, have, have played probably three or four different systems. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'm not privy to why they played them systems or whatnot. Um, so, play three or four different systems, perhaps a little bit of lack of cohesion, new players, different systems. Um, and. I think all of that, and they've signed some players late on in the window, maybe having a pre-season, so you know, it looks like they, they, they're tired a little bit in, in certain games. So if you put that all together, there's loads of things there that can contribute. And then, you know, results beat you up. You know, I, can, I can go in and give everybody all the confidence in the world. The biggest thing to give you confidence is a win. So it's a case of the win might build the momentum. Can we get it tomorrow? Hopefully, but, but we'll work towards it. But, it's all of them little things can can make the team disjointed, can make it look like they're not trying. No one doesn't try, but they, they've lacked a bit of cohesion. I think they've played 25 players in, in yeah. seven games, which sort of tells its, its own story, doesn't it? And tells you the, the size of the squad. Do you think the minute there are too many players here then to work with on a, on a daily basis? Of course there is. Uh, you know that, that's an easy question to answer. You know, and and you know, the owners have come in. They they. They're really good, really, really good. I've been really impressed with them. Um, and, you know, had they got everything right in their first minutes of doing it, probably, they'll probably turn around and go, oh, we've got some things wrong, but all with great intentions. Um, they wanted to bring some good players to the club. They've tried to do that. Uh, yes, there's too many. Yes, we do need to, as we go along, work out what the squad's going to look like uh, and work it from there, because even financially, it's unsustainable to do that. And it will help um, to you know, filter it down so that the boys know this is us now, this is the core. Um, but that's obviously got to be done the right way. Good. So when the Lost were brought in, there was this talk of a development squad. It probably wasn't, they weren't going to be able to start this season, but for next season. Is that still something that you see happening in this football club then? Is that something now that's been parked? Um, I think from my point of view, it's not something I've even looked at or focused on. I, 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 you know, in two days, you're meeting a brand new group of players. You listen to you know some of the staff who have been here who know the characters, and you take bits on. You see for yourself. And even for me, trying to pick the team for tomorrow and work out right, I've had two days to look at how I want to play, who might be able to carry that off after two days training, who's taking it quite quickly, uh, who's uh, the fittest group we've got. You know, hot day tomorrow. Who can cope with that? And try and work out the balance of, of what that is um, for tomorrow. So everything else 
there's so much to do, so, so much to do. You know, there's loads of new people arrived at this football club, new owners, new, new staff, general manager, manager, all that kind of stuff. It's a blank canvas for us all. Um, it's not going to be happening overnight. So how are you picking that side tomorrow? Are you getting help? I know Tony Mamala is still be hanging around this week. Obviously you've got people like Paddy McLaughlin as part of the backroom staff or has been. Are they going to help you pick the side or is it entirely down to you? Uh, it's absolutely 100% down to me to pick the team. Um, on, with my eyes, what I've seen. What I always say to my staff when I walk in the door, I want your opinion, not mine. I don't want a yes man. I'm comfortable in my own shoes for people to challenge me, for people to give me their opinion. I always say I'll always listen to it. I've always got to be the one that makes the final decision because it's my neck on the line. Uh, for, for the game, obviously I've done my homework on Ball and Wood. I know what they're about. I know Luke Well, excellent manager. I've got to try and look and go, how do I think for this first game is the best way I can try and win the game? Now, bearing in mind players we've got available, players we've got unavailable, even that will dictate what shape I have to play. There's no point in me trying to play a 4-4-2 if I've only got one forward. You know, you have to, the shape will be dictated by what I've got available and we work out how we're going to approach that game. Monday, I'll come in and I'll start trying to sort lots of other stuff out that's not to do with Saturday's game. We've seen Neil Cox knocking around. I presume you would be trying to bring him in as your assistant as he was at Wimbledon, as he was at Notts County. Uh, that's something that we're working on. Um, it's obviously been a rough getting me over the line and then trying to get Neil in the building. So uh, hopefully that's that's getting getting sorted out today. You know, Neil lives in uh, Baltry. He's, he's an hour away. It's it's a very easy decision for me to work with somebody who I've had loads of success with, who I've been friends with for, for 30 years. Um, he's also friends with Tony Mack. They know each other very well. So there's lots of things there that work really, really well, and hopefully we can be as successful as we have in the past. Does that mean Tony will be staying in the football club? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, and again, um, you know, from the outside, people can criticise. He got beat four-one last week. He, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. From what I've seen, he, Tony's very good, very thorough. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, I've said to all of the staff, Coxie you knows me. I've said, sit back and, and let me try and take the first couple of weeks and see what I want, see what I expect from the players. And once you're like, and I did the same with James Quinn at Solihull, once you're like, yeah, this is, it's not complicated, this is simple, I like this, then they can really step in and, and start coaching. But it helps having someone that you trust and someone that you know and someone that knows you as well in Neil Cox, rather than bringing in someone who's completely new to it, you've not worked with before. Yeah, of course, but I've had it both ways. I've, I've worked with Neil Cox and Simon Bassey at Wimbledon, they were great. Simon Bassey, I didn't know that well before, He's a good friend now. James Quinn at Solihull, didn't know him, came in work with him, brilliant coach, good friends now. So I'm I'm the sort of guy, if somebody's good, I'll work with them all day and, I, and I'll treat them the way they want to be treated and they'll run for a ball for me. So I'm comfortable either way, but it's great that, that if we can get Neil over the line. How do you see the season then for York City? Because it's the early, I know they haven't won again, they only decided mm -hmm. to have not won a game, but we're only seven games in. Yeah, there's two ways of looking at it. Uh, I, I look at points per game and, and you know, if we was going to get in the playoffs now, we'd have to get 75 points. For us to get 75 points with 39 uh, games, we've got to almost average 1.92 points per game. I averaged 1.92 points per game when I was solid old manager and finished third in the league with a very, very good team that I had a full pre-season with. So there's the challenge of looking at the playoffs. That's my first look, it's got to be there, but there's the challenge. We need almost two points a game to get in the playoffs because of where we are. So. I look there, but I'm realistic to, enough to know this league's very, very strong. Loads of really good teams I've got a lot of respect for. And the first thing I've got to do is try and sort us into some sort of team that's competitive before we can even look in that direction. Do you think Matt understands that as well? He says he's new, he's inexperienced. When you have spent quite a lot of money, surely that wasn't the aim at the start of the season. We've got to be at least in the playoffs, if not I, I, pushing I, for that yeah, top spot. I think you'd be surprised. I think they're very, very switched on um, to the process that this isn't just going to be an easy, quick happening, that, that you know, when we talked, they talked about trying to make our way from where we are now to becoming really strong in this league, to becoming a proper League Two team, uh, and they know that that doesn't happen overnight, and, you know, like I said, we've got a huge squad, and I've got to work out who can fit for now and then work out how we can move that forward. I'm sure you will have already have targets in mind depending on what you see from these players over this first couple of weeks. 
do you think you will be able to bring players in before you move players out, or are you now dependent on moving players out? Do you think? I think that's a discussion for me, Matt and Julianne, to have. Um, they have been very brave and put money where their mouth is and, and had a right go to try and get us on the front foot. It hasn't worked, um, and what we've got to be very, very careful of is that we don't keep accumulating players in the same vein. You know, there's a couple of areas in the pitch that we're light on, that we, you know, you would want an extra position there and an extra position there in a different different style to really, when it comes to Saturday, Tuesday, give us the, the flexibility to do more with. So I'm the sort of manager I've worked on tight budgets. Wimbledon, I was a bottom four budget most of the time, not so slightly different. And, uh, and Solly, I was a mid-table budget. So I'm, I'm comfortable with, with everything. And I said to Julianne when I... When I was talking to her at the start, I'll spend your money like it's my own. So I'm not going to go in banging on the door saying, I want, I want. It is, what can we do? Let's work on it. Do we need to get out first? Do we not? I haven't had them conversations because I've got two days to try and get a win on the board and make everybody just go, oh, that was great. That's my first plan. And then if we can do that, next week we can start to look at, right, how can we move from here? Let's look then to, to tomorrow. Players who are unavailable. Have you, can you go? Do you know which players are unavailable? Is it? Can you remember which players? You want to just no, met them, of course. Yeah, of course. We, we've got a few. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Alex Woodyard's been out. Um, he, he's back into his running work, and, and he'll be back training next week. As hopefully will Callum Harriet. So they're they're not going to be available. Um, we've got obviously. We know Lenny's got uh, his suspension. His final game of his suspension. Um, Levy has. Uh, got some bad news this week that he, he landed on his back a couple of weeks ago and looks like there's a little fracture at the bottom of his back which might be a, a longer term one obviously Duckworth's still trying to get through his, his tendinopathy and his Achilles so we've got you know you've done well there yeah we've got several players that, that aren't going to be available um, we've got a couple that couldn't train earlier in the week and have only joined in the back end of the week so there's you know there's, I can make not excuses but I can give you loads of out some reasons and it's going to be 32 degrees here tomorrow and, and it's going to be a tough day but the boys are ready they had a good day today we've we've announced the squad we did work on the team today I feel like in two days I've really prepped them for tomorrow now whether we can transfer that with no anxiety in a difficult situation on the pitch tomorrow who knows but I'll try and take the pressure off them and hopefully they'll go and play free and I'm sure the atmosphere inside this ground you, you remember it from the solid all game last year, which was a bit, a bit of a chaotic game for him, right? There's some iffy defending, shall we say, from both teams that night. But the atmosphere inside this crowd, the crowd do generate, is superb. You must be looking forward to that. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, we all know we're in a tough position. I, there's a saying that I've always said, which is support us when we struggle and enjoy us when we're good. And, you know, at the moment, York are struggling. So, it, if you can, if everyone can rally, you know, including you guys, and rally round and go, look, we all want the best for you. We're all, we all, we're all from the area. We all, we all love the club. If everyone can get round and be as positive as they can. We'll do our best and really work at every aspect of what we need to do to try and create a good team. Because when the city's buzzing, when the team does well, the whole city's buzzing. You know, I had it with Solio, Everyone travelling down to to uh, the Olympic Stadium to, to you know. The buzz around the place was brilliant. Notts County was tougher because we had a playoff final in a pandemic with no fans and no one could travel to Wembley. But Wimbledon, we had 25,000 go to Wembley. I've had these moments and the buzz is incredible. So if we can support us while we're having this tough time, really get behind the lads, you know, anxiety is a big thing when things aren't going well. And just by having people saying, unlucky you, well done you, and that's players to each other, fans to players, positivity, we, we can hopefully you know, take our way up and become successful. And it's quite unusual to see Boron Wood, who are also not having the greatest season so far under Luke, because they're, every season they need to be in the playoffs around about, don't they? But they've, they've struggled at the start of this season. Yeah, Luke's... And they've got lots of injuries as well. Yeah, Luke's a brilliant manager. Love, love Luke, get on great with Luke. Um, the, the league's probably as even as I've ever seen it. You know, a couple of seasons ago when I was at Notts, we in the playoffs, I thought there was a quite a big divide, top to bottom. There was like a top 12 and, and a bottom. This season, obviously no knots, no Wrexham. Um, you look at it, you know, teams, Oldham have spent good money and Chesterfield, uh, Cookie's great and they're always strong. But then you look at teams like your Gateshead's, you know, and they're excellent. You know, not a big budget, but excellent. Tough to play against, play great football. You know, and you go for Wildstone, really small budget, play great football, 
challenge you all over the pitch with the way they create over. There's so many challenges in this league. I think it's really even. And for us to build some momentum, we're going to have to become a very, very good outfit to be able to otherwise we'll, we'll struggle. And I don't know if you know, but if you do win tomorrow, that'll be your 200th win as a manager, which would be a great way to start. I, well, you know better than me. Great start. Um, yeah, that will be nice. I, I never really look at that sort of things. I mean, obviously, when I was putting my presentation together, I looked. You at missed my, that one out. Yeah. Well, I looked at my national league record since I, you know, we came to national league, and and I've averaged seventy six points a season since I've been in the national league. So, you know, I've had a promotion with Wimbledon. I look at them sort of things, which are actual achievements. Um, I, the, the wins are all part of that. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So Neil, welcome to York City. How how, do you, how is it to be here? And what are the first couple of days been like for you, even around the city? And yeah, I haven't had a chance to even go around the city. I promise you, it's been manic. Um, you know, when you come into a new football club, uh, I was here all day before I was announced as manager, sorting out the the signing. Um, I then went with Macca across to see the training ground about half six on Wednesday because I didn't want to walk in Thursday and go. What's this? So I went there, I needed to understand what I'm walking into. Then I started looking at the squad, going through who's available, who's on loan, who's where, who's that. Then you, you know, obviously I know a lot of players from my experience, but then when them players turn up that morning, you have to know who you're talking to, I, you know, their names, everything. So as a manager, there's so many things to think about in them first couple of days. And I knew that I just had to focus two days on how can I get the team prepared to try and win a game of football. And then we'll worry about all the extra stuff afterwards. So it's been manic. I haven't been to the city centre yet. I've got to go at half, about five o'clock to pick my wife up from the uh, station. So that should be the first time I go in. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a beautiful city. I've always, always loved York. So as far as a place where you can come and do your work and live, it's it's an amazing place and I'm really looking forward to it. And you left Solid Hill just a matter of month, was months ago and now we're here at York. What was it that attracted you to come up north and work? Um, I'm big on projects. Right? When, when I was younger, a, a wise, wise manager said to me, um, don't always go for the size of the club, go for the project sometimes. And Wimbledon was obviously easy for me, being a hometown club, um, and Knotts was easy given the size of the club. Solihull I saw as a real project, and to achieve being 20 minutes from promotion uh, in our first season was pretty amazing. And with York now, it's, it's, it's actually probably the biggest project that I've had because there's so much to do with a fresh, clean slate of loads of new people that have arrived at this football club. So I'm quite excited about it, but it's all very well being excited by the bigger picture. The most important thing is to, to win some games and, and that's got to be my first priority is how can I at least get some wins on the game so we, we get that part started while we look at the bigger picture. And there's obviously one familiar face in Callum Howe, who was your captain at Solihull Hill last year. Is there any other players who you've come across previously? Uh, loads that I've come across. I mean, I, my teams have played. I've done my homework. So when David first rang me and said, would you be willing to come and talk to, uh, to Matt, have a conversation straight away. First thing I do is always the way I am, perhaps my OCD. I went away, looked at the squad, watched games, saw what I was doing, and then I watched two of your games live. Um, watched the Epsley one last week live and that because I knew that this opportunity might be coming and I wanted to know. So when I'm talking to Matt and when I'm talking to Julianne, they want someone who's not wet behind the ears, they want somebody who's talking to them about their squad, about what they've seen, about that, telling them stuff that they may already know, but at least they're going, yeah, okay. So all the players I've watched, so I know what we've got, all the players I've played against in the past, you never quite know until you've worked with them. So I know Callum Howe, all of his strength, how I need to treat Callum Howe, how I get the best out of Callum Howe, and how to read him as a person. The other lads, I can't know that until I work with them. And when you see them every day in training, you start to work, learn all their traits, and what you need to do to try and get the best out of them. Obviously, you can't give too much away, but what can you tell us about your favorite formations and how you like to play? Uh, I, I like to play football from the back. Um, so at Solihull, at Knotts, my teams were always in the top three or four in the league for possession. Uh, I like to try and play attacking fo football. Um, in my presentation I showed clips of the way Solihull played. 
to to uh, the owners. Um, and I think there was one clip where my in a back four, where my left full back was crossing and my right full back scored at the far post. And I actually said that's not meant to happen. <laughs> it was just a team that were uh, free flowing. Um, so I like to try and be brave and attacking. I've got to look at whether we're ready for that or not, whether we're quite in, in that place because at Solio and at Knott, so I built that. Um, formation wise, I will work on several formations, whether it's a 4-3-3, four, three, three, a 4-4-2. Four, four, I sometimes can go to a 3-5-2, but that's got a lot of grey areas in it and needs a lot of work. Um, so I will start off by trying to nail a couple of systems and make sure that we're very good at them. Uh, sometimes in games of football, one's not working. No matter how hard you've worked during the week, it's just not working. And the manager's job is to go, why is it not working? Would this work if I change it? But the boys can't then change to a system that they don't know. They've got to change to one where they know. And obviously, you've just mentioned there, you've got a huge squad for this league. How do you plan to manage that and you have them to go down on it? I think first and foremost, I need to try and give everybody an opportunity. We've got injuries coming back and whatnot. I need to try and give everyone an opportunity um, to see whether they, because there might be one or two that you think are going to be you know, ideal for you and then there's somebody you're not so sure of and they get it like that. So I've got to look at that, but you know, with respect to the owners, we have to uh, balance the books a little bit. Uh, you can't pay 34 people and have uh, you know, 13 people not in a squad or whatever it is. We've got a few lads out on loan now. But again, even then, you've got to be, it's got to be right. At the time when you think that somebody's not in your plans, you have to treat that person with empathy. You have to treat them right. You have to talk to them about what's best for them. You can't just try and discard people. They're under contract and you have to do it the right way. So when that time comes, then conversations will, had, will be had, but they've got to be done right. You mentioned you've got four players out on loan. Are they going to come back at any time soon to have a chance to try and impress you or are they going to remain at their respective clubs? So we talked about potentially seeing whether we get one or two uh, back to train with us. One of the days they're due to train with their other club so that we can look at them without calling them back from their loan and then having to send them back if we decide. We don't want to mess people around. So it's a case of trying to get eyes on them but not disrupting the situation as it is now and if we get eyes on them and think oh they could be an asset then that might then be the conference at the time where we say well let's call them back. How do you without a win this season you come into the game against Bournemouth tomorrow you must be looking to make an immediate well immediate impact it doesn't happen overnight but you must be looking to make an impact. I think the, the key for tomorrow is and there's one saying I'll always say to the players is don't let the result affect the performance so you know I've got parameters that I've used for the last three or four seasons where I've had playoff successes or been in the playoffs, performance by numbers, what sort of stats we have to hit, you know, clear cut chances, expected goals, all these kind of stuff. Um, this isn't going to happen overnight. What I want tomorrow is the boys to try and implement what we've worked on for the last two days. And if they try and do that and they show me that their mentality without the ball is everything I've asked them for, that will be the start. I can't guarantee the result. Referee could give us a rubbish penalty against us, we could have a deflected shot, we could dominate the game. I've shown players stats before um, that my teams have collected without a score on the top and said who wins that game. And the stats would tell you this team wins, but it ended up 1-0 to that team. So it shows you you can dominate a game, be by far the better team and still lose. And you've got to accept that's football. So don't let the result affect the performance. Let's try and put in a really good performance. Normally, more often than not, because my playoff positions have said that more often than not, they'll win your games. But tomorrow, let's focus on the performance, try and put in a good performance, get the fans excited, at least whatever the result is, make them go away going, oh, I saw some real positives there. And that's, that's got to be our aim, but we know football's about results. And the perfect way to start with a home game, you must be really excited to meet the fans. Yeah, it'd be great. Um, I'm unbeaten at the moment, so they've got nothing to moan about with me, but whether that changes 20 minutes in, who knows. Um, but no, I, obviously I'm going to give it everything. I'm going to move up to the area. My wife's going to flip between being at home with my daughters and coming up and spending time with me. So we're going to really have a go. The job's a big job. We'll give it everything we've got. I'll try and use all of my experience to, to, to make it a better football club. You know, I've managed three football clubs. Two of them I've managed to their highest ever finish in their, in their history. So hopefully I can try and do something good where whenever the time comes I'm not York City manager, people go, you did a great job for us and that's what I'll try and do.
what do you see as a realistic aim for the season at this point? Obviously, you've got to get out of the relegation zone first of all, but where, where do you think this could come, be, come into the uh, season? This season, if I'm honest, like I said before, I'm going to look and go, I need 1.9 points to get in the playoffs. That's my first thing. If I don't look there, then what's the point? But realistically, my first step is to try and put together a cohesive team that knows how to get results home and away. And wherever that takes us, I don't know, but that's my first challenge because as you guys know, because you've watched all season, that, isn't, that hasn't been there so far. So if I can try and at least start with that part, it's a brutal league with lots of good teams and I'm not going to start promising things that are going to be very difficult to deliver. Thank you. Hi Neil, uh, welcome to the club first of all. Uh, what sort of what was job to your attention then? Was it uh, through the application process or was it through word of mouth? Uh, it initially came from, I think, with the new owners and David Stockdale and, and um, uh, I don't know, it was maybe Darren Kelly as well, that they asked for a short list of managers that were out there that, that potentially could be a good fit. David Stockdale, uh, I was, I was one that he thought would be a good fit with my experience and, 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 and uh, at the level. And David gave me a call and, and just said, look, been, you know, we're putting together a list. Is it something you would be interested in? And first answer was, yeah, we'd love to come and have a conversation. So that was the first part. You know, at the same time, I always look, you know, the owners are interviewing me and, and seeing if I'm right for them. And I'm almost looking and is this going to work? Can I work with them as well? And certainly by my face-to-face -face meeting the second time, I got a really, really good feel that made me. The first time I was like, okay, that's the first little chat. The second time I was like, I, I really like these people and, and I think they've got a good project here. Yeah, when you first come to club then, what was your first meeting like with the players? Um, you'd have to ask them. They might, I, I thought I did really well, but they <laughs> might they might think differently. The couple that were asleep in the back may have... Uh, um, no, I just... It's, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a real thinker, so... I like to plan, I like to think about what I say. Everything's got to have a, a meaning, a, a reason why it's being said. And I just sort of sold, told them what to expect from me um, and, and what I expect from them and, and things that we're going to do as we go along. But it was mainly about, I'm going to try and teach you guys to play really good football with rotation, with movement, with patterns, so that you're all on the same page. I said, but I can't do that if your mentality without the ball is lazy and I said, that's not going to work. I said, so if you want me to not go out there and just do defending sessions and show us how we can really play, you need to say, we'll do the other side, Gaff. You don't have to keep on us about that. So that was really the first message. Um, as we go along, we'll create a leadership group within the, within the team, within the squad, where me and my staff will liaise with the leadership group. They'll run the dressing room. We'll look at what we can improve around the training ground, try and raise all the standards with footballers, take the excuses away from them because they're great, they've got loads, I've been one once, they moan about everything, they've got excuses, we'll take them away from them to make sure they've got everything they need to perform at a high level week in, week out. Would you say that every player at the club's currently got a clean slate then? Yeah, I think so, I think you have to do that. Um, I, I think we're very light in one or two areas as far as if we really want to do well, we really need to add one or two but obviously that seems a crazy thing to say when I've got 34 players we need to add one or two but it's it's a little bit imbalanced um, and like I said before whether we whether we try and get some out before we get in that's conversations that we'll have next week but for now I next week will give me a greater insight but I want to look at everything whether it's mentality how people are around the place uh, their attitude in training how hard they work whether they understand the way I want to play whether they can play the way I want to play I've got to work all this out quite quickly to be able to say, right, these guys are the ones I think can take us forward and we may have to get these guys some playing time. Yeah, so look at your history a little bit. Previously in the academy at Cardiff, is that something you're looking to maybe bring with you to York? So look at the, <coughs> the academy at York and work on how to develop those players? Well, it won't be my job to develop those players. Last season at Solio, I gave four debuts to academy players who are still youth team. Um, at the back end of the season. Uh, at Wimbledon, I think I must have given 10 in six years, I think I gave 11 or 12 debuts to the academy players. So I've been on both sides, I know how academies work, I've done an E-Triple-B all year, um, and, and I know 
the, how difficult it is for a young lad at the age of 18 to be ready to step up into first team football. So I'm open to all of that because they could be massive assets for the club. Absolutely open to all of that. Um, it's difficult as a manager at first. You know, you know how quickly managers can get turned over and uh, and, and get sacked. The first focus is win games because if I don't win games. It won't matter who's coming through the ranks soon. So I have to start winning games and putting things in place that make us good on the pitch. And then I can look at, secondly, how we uh, how we grow that side of things or help grow that side of things. Yeah, you've only taken, I imagine, two training sessions so far. But has there been any academy or first team players that have impressed you in the <coughs> stages? There's been some young lads joining. But again, because we've, um, we've got such a big squad, although we've got injuries, we've still got you know, 20 senior players available. So when you're looking at doing 11 v 11 and shape work and stuff like that, um, you, know, you only need two goalies and, and 20 outfield players to do that. So uh, the young lads who are sort of in between the academy and the first team, in, in them phases, they've joined in everything else. We've had them like, watching on, listening to the messages, listening to what's being said. Um, so I haven't had a chance to even look at all them. You know, for two days it's been, can I get, get us playing at least trying to play a certain way because if we go into tomorrow's game and I haven't even told them how I want them to try and play, we just we're where we was before I arrived. It's like how are we playing? Are we going long? Are we going short? So at least I've tried to give them their messages um, and see if we can see if we can execute. Yeah, and speaking of tomorrow's game, in your personal match against Boreham Woods, you've not uh, lost them in the last three games. Is this a case of perhaps just using what you know of this game or is it using the strengths of the players alongside that? Different teams, you know, um, you know, the, the, the team I had at Soliol, you know, was, was very, very good. You know, we, we, would, we, could, we were wiping the floor with most teams in our promotion pushing season. Um, I haven't got that, I haven't arrived and picked up that team with that knowledge, with, with that knowing the rotations and knowing each other. So. You can't look at it and say, oh yeah, that record's great against Bournemouth. I know how Luke's teams are, I know how well drilled they are, how organised they are, how powerful they are, how strong they are, how much of a threat Chris Bush's long throw is, how well they do it. You know, I've prepped the players for that. If they can stand up to that and they can execute some of what we've worked on, we'll, we'll give them a good game. That's all I can say. Yeah, and the uh, last one from me then. Uh, have you got a message to those Yorkshire supporters? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's been tough. We know it's been tough, um, you know, and I know the lads, who, the guys who would have travelled a long way down to Everton last week. Uh, I know how hard that can be. The one thing you'll you'll get from me as a manager is I'm an honest guy. If the team hasn't performed, I won't try and smoke some mirrors. It. There's always a fine balance as a manager when you're in the press of not slaughtering your players and protecting them. You know, you can't go and just lambast them, and giving real honesty to supporters who have travelled and paid good money, and. I would like to think when I give my interviews after games that the supporters will go, yeah, I saw that game. That's the game I saw. And OK, I'll accept that because he's, he said it as it was without you know, throwing players under the bus. He said it how it was. So you're going to get an honesty from me. Um, like I said before, support us when we're struggling and enjoy us when we're good. And, and try and try and really, we've got two home games now, try and create something and we'll try and create performances that, that you're really happy with uh, and, and if they're not I won't I won't hide behind it. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, Neil, you've got you've obviously got an experienced owner, an experienced head of recruitment, a couple of young coaches in, in Tony and Paddy, so you're gonna have to be very hands on. Is that part of the appeal of, of this job for you? Yeah, um, I said to the coaching staff straight away, the first two weeks I'll I will take mm. a lot of the training because I want the coaching staff, you know, Tony, Mac, and the keepers, coaches, and everybody to go, I've got it. And Tony's already got it. He straight away went, I can see rotations, it looks good. They don't know what to do when you do this. And, and he's already on it. And then eventually they'll start to, when we start putting sessions on, and we discuss everything I do in training, yeah, there's not enough time in training to not work on what you, how you play. Yeah. And everything we do will be about how we play, how we play, how we play, and repetitive so that it becomes real normal. So. Yeah, there's all of that, you know, with David, you know, David, really honest guy, lovely guy. First thing he said to me is, I want to learn from you. He's got no airs and graces. He wants to want to learn. I want to sit in your meetings. I want to pick your brains, you, Coxie. So it's great. I love, I love all of that. I love being a leader. So that part's exciting. I will be hands-on to start. 
and then hopefully if, if everything starts to go how I hope then the coaches will start to carry the message on the training field and I can you know take the bigger picture I mean you mentioned to David about being a manager rather than a coach is, is that is that what you most enjoy you know not, not just the training work but the whole sort of day-to-day -day running of, of yeah, uh, when you're a manager club. you manage up yeah you manage sideways you manage down and, and I've had yeah, incredible experience of challenges you know from Knox County the, the owners of Knox County that took over uh, you know when, when I left were unbelievable like absolutely made for football the owner before there was challenges with that um, the uh, you know at Solihull great first season you know we didn't do as well in the second season Wimbledon it was a, a fan zone club there's all sorts of challenges and we all know one of the an important thing in life is emotional intelligence and reading the room and, and understanding you know how how you need to be in, in that room so with players every day I think who can I talk to tomorrow what sort of conversation is it he looks a bit low do I put my arm around him do I walk in from training with him do I take him in the office I'm always thinking about people how I can improve them how I can help them how I can make them feel better about themselves so it's no different you know around the place and for someone who's played at the highest level, you've obviously worked in a big academy as well. What what's the appeal of non-league football? Because I'm sure you'll have ex-teammates who wouldn't go near it, and others who absolutely love it. What what's the appeal? Of I think, it? I think um, it's a, we, we'd all like to work in the Premier League, and what comes of it? Because we'd never have to work again, would we? <laughs> um, we would all like to work in the Premier League, and we'd all like to work as high as we can we we can. And I don't ever look and go, oh, I want to work in the Championship. That's me. But I look and go. Wherever I am, I'm learning, I'm becoming better, uh, uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. You have to have thick skin to be a manager. People naturally are going to criticise you and I don't ever take it personally. It's, I'd like to think if, if all of you came and had a beer with me and were around me and got to know me at all, none of you would criticise me as a person, but you might go, I don't think the team's playing very well and I don't think this and that. And everyone's got their opinions on that. So I never take that part personally. I, I just think that I'd love to work in the championship, but I've got no airs and graces. I just think if you keep doing good jobs, like a good, like a player, if you keep playing well, you'll find your level. You'll go up levels if you keep managing well. You know, I'd love nothing more than to do a brilliant job for York for two or three years, getting promotions galore and what that, and then a championship club come in for me, and the owners have got a decision to make. You know, that that's great. That's a win-win all round. Um, but there's some brilliant managers. Uh, you know, Chris Wilder came through the ranks. We know. I think sometimes people get pigeonholed into he's a championship manager, he's football's football. The only thing that changes when you work at that level is the recruitment, you've got to know the players that play at that level and the quality of the player. You know, if if I want to play brave, open, expansive football, surely the quality of that player is gonna be even more be able to do it. You know, I might have to simplify it a bit down here. So, um, yeah, it's, I love it. It's, it. There's brilliant managers in this league, really brilliant managers in this league. And as someone who is from further afield than us, but, but knows, knows the level, what's the, what's the outside perception of York City football? Um, I think with what's happened this summer, and this is something we've got to really rein in, the owners have been very brave and, and had a go at trying to sign some exciting players. I think the perception that we've got to change is that people think York City are money bags and they're throwing money at this, like a, whatever you want to call it, a Wrexham or what you want to call it. That's not the case. It's really not the case. It's this, they want to run this football club brilliantly from top to bottom. They want to, to build this football club to success. And I think there's something about if you have success and it ends up with a promotion and going into the league and you're doing it, with a sustainable model that's been built with good foundations, and you, you really, you know, putting everything into into you know longevity, that's got to be more satisfying than just throwing some money. And that's what the owners want to do. So, the perception at the moment is, you're throwing a few good around. That's going to change. It, it, it's um, I know it's going to change. So next agent that thinks, well, I might be able to get that because I heard that it won't happen. And I there's Solly Hill. People used to refer to a player that we had at Solio that people had heard was on good money. Let's see, that's, that's not the case, that's not happening. And, and, and that's probably the perception. Yeah. Big club throwing money around, got it wrong down the bottom. Not the percept. The perception is, the truth of it is, they're going to try and do this properly. 
and I say you've, you've worked at different size clubs, different, I know they're all different. Um, does the fact that York's obviously got the Football League history, a bit like Notts County, does that does that come with expectations and does that come with things that you can use to your advantage as well in terms of getting Yeah, it's a great right? club. I mean, everybody, people that messaged me, I had loads of messages when, when I was announced, people said, great club, great club, great club, you know, that was it. And, and obviously when I was at AFC Wimbledon, we played against you quite a bit and, and uh, certainly at the, at the, um, the old ground, which, you know, was great, but falling apart in areas, as we know. I remember walking down the tunnel to the dressing room and drips were coming in and stuff like that. But um, it is a great club um, it, and it's a great city. Everybody, everybody says, oh, York, what a city. You know, and I know that because I've been to your races <laughs> uh, and, and stuff like that. But I know it's a great city, it's a beautiful city. So, um, <coughs> yeah, I think that that's, that's a big, big thing. That's, that's the way it, it, it looks certainly from the outside. And, and just just finally for me, I mean, you've not been out of work that long, but are you are you one of these? Whenever you're out, you're just desperate to get back in, just thinking about what can I do at this club do or that club. You know what? It was really weird because it was two days before pre-season was due to start when me and Solly Holt parted mm. away. So I'd had a little summer break, signed six players for Solly Holt. Thought we'd had a really good window ready. Then that happened, and it ended up being a strangely a blessing in disguise. My wife lost her mum shortly after and it was quite a tough time for the family and I started to think to myself, wow, if I wasn't there, if I was at work mm. and my wife and my kids were in a really bad way, um, I wouldn't have been able to support them. So I ended up, the blessing was that I could be there and be a real rock for them and help them through that which has happened. So now this is, you know, at a time where probably for two or three weeks my life was on hold and, and now it's come out the other end and all of a sudden I've got a real excitement about me where We've had a little bit of a, a tough spell, and all of a sudden it's like, right, I've got, it will get my hands in, and my wife's looking forward to spending time up here and in a beautiful city with me as well. well good luck with it. Thank you.